The Type 42 class destroyers were designed according to the newest concepts at the dawn of the Missile Age and at the height of the First Cold War. The Royal Navy had great expectations for them. However, they took their place in the history books with their misfortunes as much as for their successes. Now, we are investigating the Type 42 class, one of the most notable British destroyers. The Type 42 class destroyers experienced many misfortunes during their service lives. The sinking of HMS Sheffield is undoubtedly the most well-known example. Still, these surface combatants were also much more than that. The origin story of the Type 42 class destroyers goes back to 1962 when the Royal Navy initiated the CVA-01 project. This project aimed to design and build four new conventional aircraft carriers accommodating 50 aircraft. These ships would replace carriers HMS Victorious, HMS Ark Royal, HMS Hermes and HMS Eagle. The UK also planned to build four Type 82 class air defense destroyers to escort each CVA-01 class carrier. These surface combatants were equivalent to the light cruisers of the US Navy with their size, sea keeping capabilities and long range air defense missiles. But even though it was difficult to accept, it was now sunset time for the Empire on which the sun never set once. The Labour government, which came to power in 1964, was aware of the situation and dedicated to stopping spending money on such overly expensive but unnecessary projects. So, the UK, which was no longer a global power, gave up the CVA-01, one of the symbols of this power, in 1966. It was the time of the new pocket aircraft carriers with the V-Soul Harriers. The Type 82 class was no longer necessary for the Royal Navy, which gave up the carrier strike force structure. So, the British naval engineers designed the Type 42 class destroyer, the miniaturized version of the Type 82, as a more feasible solution to escort new pocket aircraft carriers. But even when the first ship of the class, HMS Sheffield, was laid down in 1970, there was something odd. Although it would reduce sea keeping capability, the destroyer was redesigned to be shorter than the original plan to save money. HMS Sheffield was launched on June 10, 1971 and commissioned on February 15, 1975. She was initially fitted with odd-looking exhaust deflectors on her funnel tops to guide the high-temperature exhaust efflux sidewards. ARA Hercules and ARA Santissima Trinidad built for the Argentine Navy also had these ear-like deflectors. But they caused high infrared signatures, so other ships had a more conventional funnel top. The complement of the early models of the Type 42 class, called Batch 1 and 2, was 287 person. The ship had a length of 125 meters, a beam of 14.3 meters and a drought of 5.8 meters. Its standard displacement was 3,500 tons and its fully loaded displacement was about 4,100 tons. Two 4,950 horsepower RM1C gas turbine engines provided 18 knots cruise speed. When the Type 42 class needed acceleration, it could reach 29 knots by running two 25,000 horsepower TM3V gas turbine engines. Its range was nearly 7,400 kilometers, in other words, 4,200 nautical miles at an economical speed of 13.8 knots. The Type 42 class air defense destroyer was essentially a floating sea dart battery. This missile could be effective at a range of 40 kilometers. Its effective altitude was between 100 to 18,500 meters, in other words, 300 to 60,000 feet. This missile had Mach 3.5 speed. The Type 42 class carried 22 sea darts. The 114 mm Mark 8 gun on the destroyer had a rate of fire of 25 rounds per minute and a range of 22 kilometers. The ship also had four manually operated 20 mm Erlikon model KA guns. The destroyer had two triple 324mm STWS Mark II torpedo tubes. 
Unlike the other ships of the class, HMS Sheffield was not fitted with torpedo tubes. The destroyer also had a flight deck and enclosed hangar for one Lynx helicopter. After the Falklands War, all Batch 1 and 2 Type 42s of the Royal Navy were equipped with two 20mm 6-barrel Mark 15 Phalanx close weapon systems with 4,500 rounds per minute rate of fire and 1,500 meters effective range. The Brits also fitted the destroyer with decoy launchers and additional 20mm guns. Also, in the mid-1980s, the Royal Navy commissioned four modified destroyers designated as the Type 42 Batch 3. This version had an extended bow for better sea-keeping ability. The Type 42 Batch 3 had a length of 141.1 meters and a beam of 14.9 meters. Its fully loaded displacement was 4,675 tons. This variant had different models of the same gas turbines used in Batch 1 and Batch 2 ships. The destroyer could reach a top speed of 30 knots. Complement, draft, standard displacement and range were identical to the previous batches. Later, HMS Manchester, HMS York and HMS Edinburgh of this batch were fitted with an angular 114mm gun turret with a lower radar cross-section. Soviet anti-ship missiles of the time were like kamikaze aircraft controlled by a poorly trained pilot due to their primitive guidance system. They had similar dimensions to aircraft and their sea skimming capabilities were weak. Therefore, losing long-range air defense missiles rather than a close defense system was a suitable choice against them. When the threat was the USSR, everything seemed perfect on paper for the Type 42 class. Nevertheless, the Third World War never broke out. But a different challenge was waiting for the Royal Navy. While the UK prepared for a possible war in the North, the real one began in the South. On April 2, 1982, the Argentine troops invaded the Falkland Islands, the British Crown Territory in the South Atlantic. The Royal Navy was no longer an armada that dominated the world seas as it had been 50 years ago. The Argentine Navy, which had an aircraft carrier and a cruiser, was a formidable opponent for the Brits. The British admirals were naturally worried about the situation. However, their concerns were quickly resolved when the submarine HMS Conqueror sunk the Argentine cruiser ARA General Belgrano. Even her escort destroyers in the scene could not spot the enemy attacking them. After this incident, the Argentine surface fleet did not dare to leave its bases during the war. Only the submarine ARA San Luis attempted a brave but futile endeavor to attack the British ships. The war around the Falkland Islands was now between the Royal Navy and the Argentine aircraft. On the wavy seas of the South Atlantic, the Type 42s were responsible for providing an air defense umbrella for the British task force. However, the Royal Navy's first class was a ship of this class in airstrikes. On May 10, 1982, HMS Sheffield was hit by an Exocet AM-39 anti-ship missile. It was a great shock because she was a modern air defense destroyer that could not protect herself from the air raid. Just before the attack, HMS Sheffield had moved away from the fleet to establish radio communication with the Admiralty in the UK. Also, her long-range air search radar had been turned off to prevent signal interference. Even if HMS Sheffield detected the Argentine Super Attendance, the destroyer could not have intercepted the incoming Exocet missiles since the destroyer did not have a close-in weapon system. The Type 42 class had been built using PVC and aluminum materials to reduce cost and weight. When the Exocet pierced through the HMS Sheffield's hull, it did not explode. However, its remaining fuel caused a catastrophic fire which made the aluminum body melt. Besides, burning PVC emitted poisonous gas which made firefighting efforts impossible. At that point, nothing left to do to save HMS Sheffield. After two days, the Argentine A4 Skyhawks hit HMS Glasgow of the same class with freefall bombs. But the airstrike was carried out at a lower altitude than the Argentine planners had expected. The fuses had been set wrong and the bombs did not explode. However, 
passing through the aft engine room, they put the fuel systems out of service. Even though she did not sink, the war was over for HMS Glasgow. On May 25, the Argentine Air Force managed to sink another Type 42 class destroyer, HMS Coventry. Still, the Type 42 class was not entirely unsuccessful during the Falklands War. The Sea Dart missiles shot down one Argentine SA-330 Puma helicopter, four A-4 Skyhawk combat aircraft, one Learjet reconnaissance aircraft and one Canberra bomber. Yet, Misfortune was the middle name for the Type 42 class and HMS Coventry shot down one British Gazelle helicopter in a friendly fire incident before she was sunk. The Falklands War was a laboratory that demonstrated the changed characteristics of modern naval battles. It was seen that relying on an air defense based only on missiles was wrong. Besides, the Type 42 class experienced many other misfortunes. While patrolling in the Persian Gulf in 1988, HMS Southampton collided with the container ship MV Torbay. The collision caused terrific damage and sentenced her to a three-year repair. In 2001, HMS Nottingham ran aground off the shores of Australia. The Lynx helicopters of the Type 42 class were much luckier than their motherships. During the 1991 Gulf War, on January 24, Lynx of HMS Cardiff spotted Iraqi minesweepers and landing craft moving to support the Iraqi land operations of the Battle of Kafchi. The helicopter sank one vessel. On January 30 and 31, Lynxes of HMS Gloucester and HMS Cardiff attacked at least two Iraqi missile boats exiting the Shatbal Arab. In the next month, the helicopter of HMS Cardiff sank two more Iraqi ships. The last years of the Type 42 class were intense but accident-free. 2011 was indeed a lucky year. HMS Liverpool, which patrolled off the coast of Libya, performed successful coastal bombardments. During these missions, she also managed to get rid of several attacks. Besides, the destroyer intercepted the pro qaddafi maritime forces trying to escape from Misrate and locked them in the harbor. In 1999, HMS Birmingham became the first Type 42 to be decommissioned. The last of the class in the Royal Navy, HMS Edinburgh, was decommissioned in 2013. The story of the Argentine Type 42 class destroyers was also not lucky. The second ship, Aire Santissima Trinidad, was to be constructed in Argentina. She was laid down in 1971. But due to inadequate technical capabilities, Argentina could not complete the ship on time. A terrorist attack in 1975 delayed the construction efforts even further. The Argentine Navy could not commission Aire Santissima Trinidad until 1981. But the destroyer stayed in the service for only eight years due to the problems in finding spare parts caused by the embargo in the aftermath of the Falklands War. Also, ARA Hercules could not remain in service long as an air defense destroyer. In 1999, the Argentine Navy transformed her into a multi-purpose transport ship to provide command support in amphibious operations. Many mighty surface combatants designed during the first Cold War were never used in full-scale naval battles. So, they neither saw glorious victories nor tragic losses. However, the Type 42 class had a very intense combat career. This fact also brought many misfortunes. Finding the opportunity to be tested in actual combat conditions, the Type 42 class, with both its successes and failures, inspired many surface combatant programs carried out in the following years. The use of close-in weapon systems has been widespread since 1982. Besides, the ship designs have become stealthy. Thanks to the experiences from the Falklands War, many countries have begun using non-combustible steel instead of combustible aluminum. They also abandoned using PVC which releases toxic gas when it burns. The combat information centers of the surface combatants have been armored. The importance of early warning aircraft in the task forces has been clarified again. So, even though the Type 42 class experienced many misfortunes, it paved the way for the modern combat ship design. 
This destroyer fought gallantly and shaped today's navies. The Type 42 class is undoubtedly a legend. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.